All right, everybody, Framer Workshop, they just released four features as a part of their spring event. I didn't get tickets to it, I'm very disappointed. But check this out, I'm gonna show you exactly how I prompted this into existence. There are some caveats that we will cover, but also check out what people have made already so far. So obviously very powerful. It's going to allow people who use Framer to create sites that feel even more unique and possibly interactive. So I'm gonna show you how I created mine. And like I said, there are some few gotchas that you wanna be considerate of, are mindful of. So first I have a, a document open here. It's just a blank document, black background. We're gonna come over here to the plugin section and then just type in workshop, you'll find it. And here it is, it's just a plugin and we can have our little prompt message right here. So I already have a prompt that I um, copied. So here is, here's what it is. Create an infinite amount of circles that are spaced evenly from each other. They should consume the entire layout regardless of size and allow me to control the spacing distance between each circle as well as the color and size of the circles. So essentially we're starting from kind of like a starting point just to get a few adjustable properties and then we can integrate mouse-based interactivity. Ah, there we go. So we had to change the width there. So I've ran this through a few times and each time you get a slightly different results. That is the nature of these large language mo models, unfortunately. So the question is, is this editable? Well, if we scroll down while selecting the actual component that it created, we can see spacing. So let's go ahead and mess with that. Ah, nice, it works. Circle size. That works as well. Very, very, very nice. So what about color? Let's adjust that. Nice, very nice. So it actually did exactly what I wanted it to on the first shot, which sometimes doesn't work. So that's why you have to keep reprompting if this stuff doesn't work. So now if we wanna go back and add more functionality, we just simply click edit in workshop. And now I'm gonna ask it to create a sort of hover effect. All right. so. When the mouse hovers near these circles, make the circles grow in size and change in color. Allow me to change the transition color and transition size. And additionally, allow me to change the radius around the cursor that affects the circles. Okay, I hope it works. It looks like it's updated essentially, I think. No, it's still working. All right, so this one actually had an issue, as you can see right here, it's saying, I'm sorry, I encountered an error while trying to apply the changes, blah, blah, blah. Let's just try GPT 4.1 instead and run that same prompt right through. So let me go ahead and copy this, paste it, hit enter. This is one of the caveats, one of the gotchas of working with these large language models. They're not always perfect. Um, so you just switch to a different model or try to change your prompt. Oh yeah, look at that. It works. Okay, let's go back. And for some reason, I'm not sure why it's not um, filling out the whole view here, but if we do hit play, it looks like it's working exactly as we would want it to. All right, so obviously we have these new options down here, like uh, the circle color and then the hover, the hover's uh, color and then the scale. So like how large do we want the scale to be? Well, let's just bump it up. Ooh, I like it. Uh, let's also try, to, let's change in the color here to like actual red. Look how cool that is. And if we go back, we also see there's a hover radius. So if we draw this down a lot, oh, it's just a tiny little amount. That's sweet. And then if we increase it to something ridiculous, Okay, this is what I was talking about I, as, a, as a caveat. Whenever you're working with these type of effects, you wanna make sure the performance is there. When, if we tried to add like a ton of circles, for instance, like we reduce the spacing and then we have, you know, that crazy hover radius, look at this, it doesn't work well. Always be mindful of your performance. So I would increase this, honestly, decrease the hover radius, and let's see what that looks like. Much smoother, much better. That's gonna be way more performant. So you could just keep on adding more options. Um, for instance, uh, let's say we want there to be kind of like a lag effect um, from when these things change based on the speed of the cursor or whatever. So allow me to control the time it takes for the hover effect to catch up with the mouse in order to create a lagging effect. All right, so let's see if that actually works. Uh, hover lag, let's go to like 0.6. 
Oh, I think the more it's reduced, the slower it becomes. Let's try that. Ah, yes. So that's like 0.1, I think. Very cool. So now this is something that you could just completely customize. You could change the colors to work on any backgrounds. Um, it'd actually be cool if we integrated like a little spline 3D logo that I created. So if I copy this embed code and we get out a full screen, so fun to play with this stuff. Oh, this is so cool. Look at that. This is gonna unlock so many different opportunities. Also, if you guys are unaware, I have released at the beginning of the year a full framer course, which you can check out here if you wanna learn a lot more. I'm gonna be integrating new lessons about the new features as well very shortly. Like I said, this is so fun. I wanna see what you all create. Comment below. I wanna see the different components that people are coming up. There's gonna be a lot, a lot of really cool things. Way cooler than this even. Anyhow, I'll see you soon. Goodbye.